This is just a quick test and demonstration of this very inexpensive USB sound card which I picked up from eBay and it plugs into the computer and the output can be played from Frex or whatever you want to use it. In this case I have used digitally generated frequency files which are highly accurate and we'll start for reference with a tone of one kilohertz. The scope auto sets and you'll notice that the frequency is exactly one kilohertz. Very very small error. Let's go up in frequency and see how far it'll go. Here's 10 kilohertz. Again a very clean waveform on the scope and the frequency is exactly 10 kilohertz. Sound cards have problems at high frequencies but in this case this sound card is working at 19 kilohertz now with a very accurate output and a good looking uh, a good looking waveform and highly accurate. Let's go a little higher. Here's 19,500 hertz and it's still working quite well at that point. Let's go to 20 kilohertz. Okay, the amplitude has dropped off just slightly but again you can see it's producing 20 kilohertz just fine. 20,500 hertz. Well the output is 20,500 hertz. The amplitude has dropped a little bit but it's still usable. 20,700, correct frequency and still usable. 21 kilohertz. All right, the amplitude has dropped a little bit more, but it's still 21 kilohertz. 21,500, and that pretty well breaks it. You can see the jitter in the waveform and the amplitude is low. Although the frequency is correct, it's uh, a little bit unstable and it would not work too well to drive the amplifier. So. With this particular sound card, we're limited to, call it 21,000 hertz, so that's pretty good. All right, back to 1,000 hertz. There it is, 1,000. Now, let's see what happens when we go down in frequency. Some sound cards have problems at low frequencies. Here's 100 hertz. And again, we get 100, as might be expected, and a clean sine wave. How about 10 hertz? Dropping it by a factor of 10, we now have a 10 hertz sine wave, very clean and quite accurate. The scope, uh, not the scope, but the frequency counter is rated at 10 hertz for the lower limit, so it will have some trouble triggering properly at the very low frequencies, so uh, it, it will jitter back and forth a little bit. Let's cut the frequency in half and go to 5 hertz. Well, we have a nice 5 hertz sine wave and a 5 hertz on the counter. 4 hertz. There we are, 4 hertz, and it's still working quite well. Let's go even lower, 3 hertz. Okay, at 3 hertz, now the scope has reset itself for amplitude, but the amplitude, the actual voltage output is correct. If you look at the scope, it shows 29.3 volts. Uh, the, it's reading 10 times too high because I do not have a 10x probe in the line. I'm just feeding the audio directly into the input. Let's go back up to 4 hertz again. See at 4 hertz, and let's go back up to 10 hertz. You see, it's it's yeah, this it dropped down in amplitude, not the amplitude of the waveform, but the amplitude as shown on the scope. So. Uh, it shows uh, 29.2. Let's go, and this is 10 hertz. Let's go to 3 hertz and it's 28.2 so it's very very close still very very good at amplitude alright lower yet 2 Hertz does it work yes it does we have true hertz, 2 Hertz in frequency and uh, 29 volts indicated on the scope which is 2.9 volts output okay here we go with the biggie 1 Hertz and yes in fact it does produce as you can see from the frequency counter 1 Hertz and again, remember I said the triggering is a little bit erratic at that low amplitude. And the scope, of course, is now showing just a partial wave because it's, uh, it can't auto-set that low. But if we manually rotate it one more, you can see that it's producing a very nice 1 hertz sine wave. So this sound card is capable of going across a very wide range from 1 hertz to uh, 21,000 hertz uh, with a very flat output. 
and it's an inexpensive sound card. Uh, I'll uh, post the uh, link to it uh, a little later on here. Anyway, that concludes our test for today. Just wanted to show you uh, what uh, it looked like. Thank you.